hi. Say hi. What color do you want first? Um, blue. Blue. E. No, that means yellow. Yellow. You want purple? Purple is down here. Oh. Oh, do you want red? Red. Or green? These. This is green. Green. Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today I'm with my little artist who is dying to paint, so I better make this quick. Today we are learning all about the app Procreate and how to use it. And let's jump right in the video. Okay, so today I am teaching you how to use the app Procreate. I'm gonna teach you all the basics and everything that I know personally. So I have the iPad Pro, it is an 11 inch, and I also have the Apple Pencil. So I'm just gonna go into my Procreate app here. Um, it doesn't come up on the screen, it comes up in the gallery. And just to create a new project, you're gonna tap this little plus button and you can customize the size of the screen that you'd like. So if you're doing an eight by 10 print and you want it easier to print out after, you can choose that. Um, but I'm just gonna choose a screen size for now. Okay, now first we are going to talk about the brushes. So here to your left is the size of your brush all the way up you get a nice big brush, all the way down, you get a nice small one, okay? Down here is the opacity of your brush. So when it's all the way up, you get a nice dark line. Here, let's make the brush bigger again so you can see it better. Nice dark line. And if you bring it down, you get a nice less opaque line, okay? It's a bit more transparent. And then right here, this little arrow button is to go back. So if you make a mistake, you can just erase it by going back to the beginning, okay? And then there's the one arrow pointing the other way to redo that. Okay, so now for the color of your brush that you wanna use, you go up to here to the right corner and you have your color wheel. So right now it's at black. I wanna get a bright color, bring it all the way up and you can choose your color, okay? You can also customize a palette. So if you wanna figure out um, a specific color palette to use, you can customize your own by just tapping. So say, I like this blue, tap here, and you can use these colors. There are also palettes that are already made for you that you can choose colors from, but you can customize your own, okay? Now, here is the layers. So you have your background layer and then you have your first layer. I really recommend using layers. It's just kind of easier to work with in the sense that if you make a mistake on one layer, um, so let me just show you an example of some, sometimes how I use layers. Okay, so let's say I'm doing a title. Let's get that opacity up. Okay, for like one of my thumbnails, like this. And then I wanna put writing on top. But if I make a mistake with the writing and I try to erase it, it's gonna erase this black part too. So I'm gonna create a new layer. And now the new layer is highlighted and I'm going to pick a new color. I'm gonna pick some white, and I am going to just pick a regular old brush. Um, and then I start writing, hello. Let's make that opacity up. Hello. But I don't like that. If I were to erase it and it was all together, I'd be erasing that black line. But now if I click the eraser, it's just gonna erase that one layer. It won't erase the background layer. Does that make sense? I'll show you in other videos too, or maybe this one, how to use layers, but highly suggest using them. Okay, um, for the eraser tool, you can use any type of brush, just the same as the paintbrush, okay? so. We'll go through the eraser and the paintbrush together. There are all these different brushes that you can use. Sketching, so there are different types of pencils. Ink, there are different types of pens. Um, just, I honestly suggest you just go through them and try them. They're a lot of fun to try. Um, drawing techniques, calligraphy. This is one that I really, really like to use. The script brush, okay? And it gives you the principles of calligraphy where, sorry, where you do the light stroke up get a black color just by using light pressure you actually have to do the pressure on your pencil light stroke uh oops sorry i was on the eraser tool here okay so light stroke going up 
heavy pressure going down and you actually have to do this with the pen, the light pressure and heavy pressure to get that calligraphy look with a brush pen, okay? And I think the brush pen is very similar, okay? Same thing, just on the upstroke, it's a bit more less opaque. So I, I just like the script brush better. But if you're having difficulties, there's one thing you can edit your brushes, which are is important. So you just double click. So here I was, it's already highlighted, click again, and you can edit your brush, okay? You can just play around with these edits. Um, one thing I have noticed, the streamline makes a huge difference in the smoothness of your um, your lines. So I'll just show you. I'll put the streamline all the way down and I will show you what that looks like. Okay, so I'm just going to write hello. <laughs> it's very, very ugly. <laughs> Let's do it even harder, okay? Like, look how jittery it is. Okay, so if you try doing calligraphy on here and you're like, why is it looking like that? And you know, maybe I just really suck. Edit your brush, put that streamline, like even all the way up, done. And it will help you get those really nice curved lines. It just helps guide you. So that's a little tip for you, okay? So let's go through more brushes. There's like painting um, effects, you, just tons that you can look through. Um, one that I like to use, um, I like airbrushing for softer blends. And then also I really like elements. So if I'm doing like a snowy piece with my watercolor, sometimes like the fox I did not too long ago, um, I actually put the snow over top instead of getting, instead of doing the flicking with the paint, I actually use this on Procreate. So I'll just show you with black and it's just a snow effect. Okay. So there's tons of different brushes. You just need to really, you know, play around, um, like water, everything. Okay. So there's the brushes and you can do the exact same thing with the eraser, which is great. Um, this I haven't really figured out too much, but I'll have to play around with that a bit more. And you can also import brushes if you can find um, free downloads on the internet. I haven't really done that, but you can download some other brushes if you need to. I just haven't figured that out. Okay, over here is how you select a tool. So say I do, um, I write the word, nope, I'm still on the brush one. Um, calligraphy. Okay, so I'm on the brush tool here. And I write hello. And I want to select it and I want to move it around. If I'm on that layer already, you just press that little arrow button and you can move it all the way around. You can make it bigger just by using your two fingers, make it smaller. And then you can do all these other things with it too. Um, haven't figured it out, but you can definitely play around with it but that's a tool that I use often, okay? Also, say um, you wanna write like, hello, my friend. <laughs> this is really bad writing, I'm just writing, okay. But you wanna center it a bit more and it, like you wanna put the hello above and they're all in the same layer, so it's a bit hard. So what you can do is use this cut tool here and then you go around it and it will just select that one word and you can move that wherever you like. And because it's still on the same layer, the next time you um, wanna select the whole thing, you just press that little button and it will select the whole thing, okay? So if you want to cut something that's on the same layer as something else, so maybe these two words are a bit too big for me, I'm gonna cut around it, press that arrow button, make it smaller, okay? So that's what you can do if it's on the same layer. Now, if you wanted to put them on different layers, create a new layer, maybe I'll put a heart here, okay? Um, and you want to, you don't have to cut around it for this one because it's on the same layer. So just make sure that layer is selected and when you press that little arrow button, you can move it, all right? Hope that makes sense. So that's like cutting and pasting. Um, there's all these other things that you can do with, um, Procreate as well. You can change the opacity of 
whatever is on your screen. So I'm just going to, okay, let's say we want to change the opacity of this heart. So, okay. And all you have to do is so you click the opacity button and then you can just move it down and it changes it. It makes it lighter. Okay. Another thing you can do are like blurs. So, oops, you can make them a bit blurry. I'm going to put it back. Um, there's just all these, you can sharpen them. You can change the, the hue and the saturation. So many other things that you can do with it. Okay. That's just a little thing. And then here, there's all these other things you want to do. Um, when I save my, my work, I go to share here and I will usually save it as a JPEG. Um, so it's an image. But if you want to delete the background of something, so say I want this to not have a background, okay? And I want it, like if I wanted to transfer it onto like a video of mine or something, I would delete the background and then I would save it as a PNG, okay? Export it, save image, and it will save to your photos, okay? Otherwise, that will just delete the whole background of the whole thing. Um, otherwise, you can just save it as a JPEG, Again, I just save it, save image, and it's in my photos. Okay, now, say I didn't want these on two separate layers. Another thing I can do is I can merge the layers together. So you can do this two ways. You can take both of them and then kind of like pinch them together. It's a little difficult when you only have two layers like that. You can do that, or you can click on it and you can merge down and it will combine the layer together. Okay, so now when you click that little arrow, it moves all of them. That's another thing. Um, another thing, there's all these other tools here when you click on the layer. Um, you can copy it, you can alpha lock. So say I wanted to change the color of the lettering or I wanted to do some shading on a, on a picture or whatever, but I only wanted the color on those letters or the picture and not on the background. So I'm gonna alpha lock this. I'm just gonna pick red. I'm gonna make my brush nice and big. And I'm just gonna go over it like that. And it will only color anything that's on that layer because it's alpha locked, okay? So it's really great for shading and stuff like that. So say I wanted to shade a ball. Okay, let's do this. Okay, is that on a new layer? Yes, it is. So I am going to alpha lock this layer. I'm going to create a bit of shading. So let's get that airbrush tool. So I have a soft airbrush here. I'm going to increase it. And I want to just shade one side of this, but I don't want it on the white part behind. It will just shade that one area of that layer. Okay. If I go over here, it won't do it. Only what's on that one layer, which is the ball. Okay. So that's a really cool feature as well. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Oh, here, other things you can do. So I'm just gonna delete these. Oh, also, sorry. <laughs> if you swipe it to the left, you can delete them, so clear. You can also duplicate a layer to create two of them. Um, and then you can lock it, but I'm not really exactly sure. See, I, I don't know everything on this app. There's like tons of things I still need to learn. Okay, another thing you can do is add texts and other things. So you go to the add button here, whoops, adding text. So, you know, let's write, um, welcome to my video. Okay, you can edit the style. Here's the size, so you make it smaller, bigger, all these different um, fonts, you know, all this stuff you can play with, okay? Um, and then when you're done, click on that little arrow and you can make, make it bigger, move it wherever you want to on your screen, okay? So I use the text button a lot too, and this is how I do a lot of my watercolor booklets, okay? So there's that. Um, another thing I like to do is insert photos. So if I'm learning how to draw an animal, I will insert a photo or, and then learn how to like trace it. I think I did that on my house tutorial. Another thing I like to do 
is for my thumbnails, I will insert a photo. So we're just going to go to insert a photo. And here's, um, I'm, I've been learn, trying to learn how to draw a cat. Okay. So here's my cat that I just screenshotted off Pinterest. And if you don't know how to screenshot something, you press, it's on this side, the volume up button and then the top button right there together at the same time and it screenshots an image. Okay. So here's my cat and I want to learn how to draw a cat and I'm going to try and trace little things. I'll just show you. Okay. So I'm going to get my black here. I want to make sure I am drawing on a new layer. Okay. Select my brush. So let's just do inking. I'll do this one. And I don't want it to be so dark, the picture, okay? I want it just to be kind of faded so I can draw over it but still see it. So I'm going to click back on that cat, okay? And then I'm going to go to that little wand button here. I'm going to click opacity. And I'm just going to bring it down so it's just slightly faded, okay? Go back to my layers and go on my new layer. Have my brush. And I'm just going to start looking at shapes that I see in this cat. So I see a circle for... That is way too big. <laughs> I see a circle for the head, doop, triangle ears, boop, maybe a oval for the body, and then it comes around a curve, two legs. This is how I learn how to draw animals and stuff. Okay, I will try and learn how to <clears throat> do the shape of the eyes, like that, where this nose is so sometimes i will have my circle head and then just kind of get a feel of where the facial features are in i can't i can't think you know what i mean okay and then when i want to actually start drawing over it let's make that opacity a bit lighter too so i can kind of see my outline i'm going to create a new layer and then I'm going to go around what I just did. Go around the details. Brush is still a bit too big. It's fine though. Just gives me a little bit of an idea of where everything is. And I'll just practice drawing like this for like an evening so I can learn how to draw certain animals. Animals are very difficult for me but this is how I do it. And then when I want that picture and the first sketch to go away, I can click this little box here, this little check mark, takes away that first sketch, takes away that picture. And there I have my outline, okay? You can delete those by you know swiping over and making delete, but sometimes I just like to take it away so I have the option to get there. And this just helps me um, learn how to sketch different things, okay? So that's why I, that's how I use the, um, insert a photo and I also do it for my thumbnails. I'll show you here. Okay, so I took this photo for a thumbnail which I had already edited and cropped on my phone. Um, you can just go to the crop section and I think it's like 16.9, 16.9 for um, a YouTube thumbnail size. And then I will just add the text here so I can insert text. And because this is already um, let's just write the word moon. Okay. Because this is already um, a photo, it's already on a different layer than the text would be. Okay. So you don't have to worry about creating a new, but you just might want to check it out anyway. And then I'm already on the moon layer and I can just move it wherever I like. Okay. Um, but I'm also noticing that, you know, you can't really see the text too well because of the picture in the background. So I might want to do some like white behind it. So what I can do is create a new layer and I'm going to move this layer underneath the text right there. Okay. And I'm going to take some white and I'm just going to go around there. Like that okay and because that white that I just put is underneath the moon it will be underneath okay um, these are the bottom layers and up here is the top so say this photo was at the top it would be in front of these layers you don't want that but you can just move around your layers 
as needed. And that's how I do my thumbnails, all right? Um, I am also gonna show you quickly how I do my watercolor books. So I actually just imported, actually let's, let's, no, no, no. I imported some watercolor. I scanned it on my computer first and then I imported it um, onto my iPad. And these are literally just the watercolor illustrations that I do and then I add the text after. So what I wanna do now is rearrange all these watercolor images because I don't want them to lay like this in my booklet. So I will just take that, make sure I'm on the right layer. Yep, those are all the watercolor images. I'm gonna take that little cut tool and I'm just going to go around the ones that I wanna cut, get the little pointer and place them where I want, okay? Make sure they're not overlapping each other because they're on the same layer. That will not, actually, hold on. I don't know why I grabbed that pine cone like that. Okay, so now I have all my illustrations there and then I can add text beside it. Grab that different color because you can't see white. <laughs> Edit style, make it smaller. And then you can just start typing. So whatever, different line strokes. And then I would just add every kind of text that I needed to, okay? And that's how I do my watercolor booklets. Um, it's actually quite easy and it's just time consuming, but it's a lot of fun to do. Okay, and then I, let me just see if there's anything else that I'm missing that I would like to show you. Um, I showed you the lettering. Um, editing watercolor. So sometimes I will edit um, a piece on here and take away the background. So I don't know if you can see this, but um, I usually edit in Photoshop by taking away the background, but sometimes it's just almost easier to do it here and do it manually instead of just clicking a button. Um, so I just will take my eraser tool and I will just go around the background as needed and edit it that way. Okay. And also with this sphere, I forgot one other thing I, I can show you. Let me go back to this. Um, if you want to draw geometric shapes that are perfect, here's another last little tip. So say I want to draw a circle, my circle's not perfect, hold it, it will make a perfect circle and you can also tap with two fingers and it makes a very perfect circle. Okay, so any shape, same with lines. I do a line I want to be straight, hold it and we'll make it perfectly straight for you. Okay, and then this is a way, hold it, makes it straight. So I'll even show you, I'll curve it, but you just gotta hold it and there you go. Okay, same with shapes like I showed you with the circle. I'm just going back. Um, let's do a square. Okay, it's not perfect. I'm holding it, tap two fingers, it makes it a perfect square. Okay, so that's another little tip. And I'm just thinking if there's anything else that I'm missing. Um, I think that's about it. Sketching, I showed you. Yep. Thumbnails, lettering. Um, like I said, I really like that calligraphy brush. And this is a great way to practice, you know, just going your upstrokes. And you can always, if you find a calligraphy um, guide page, you can also import it as a photo underneath and then trace over top to practice too. Okay, so that is everything and I really hope you enjoyed that tutorial and it gave you lots of great information and that's about it, thanks. Thank you all so much for watching my video. I really hope you liked it and I hope you learned something. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and follow me on Instagram for more. Have a great day guys, bye.